Today, I'm going to give you the tips and tricks you need to beat the legendary version of the Ceroli crisis. This is significantly more difficult, so let's get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I'm really hyped that the legendary version of the Ceroli Crisis is here because it dramatically increases both the difficulty and the rewards. Now you start getting gems with every win, which is huge. So I want to do a couple things in this video. First of all, I want to review what makes legendary difficulty so hard. Then I'm going to talk about the different abilities you can select to do better in this event because, yes, the abilities you choose have actually changed and a lot of people haven't even noticed that yet. And the last thing I want to do is actually play this with pugs. I'm going to try to do a pickup group on every one of the bosses you see here and walk through all of the things that you would need to know to try to beat the boss. And although I could pull in a preform group and we just absolutely crush all of these, I feel like it will be more educational to point out all of the things that are either working or not working with a pickup group rather than to take a group in here that just steamrolls the content. So let's first start with what makes legendary difficulty so damn hard. And it's right over here. First of all, broken will shatters the morale of your troops for every 20% of units that you lose. You take 15% more damage. That is a huge amount of damage. This ability is basically making it so that you must bring a healer to each group that you run. Now, you can do it without a healer, but what it's suggesting is that if the fight runs long at all, then having a healer can keep everybody healthy and prevent you from taking a massive damage penalty. Because once you drop low, it snowballs out of control and you basically lose the fight. The other thing you really need to know is poison the earth. And let me tell you, I played a lot of World of Warcraft, so I can really appreciate what's called a ground effect. Basically, what this does is that when you kill something other than one of the bosses, like one of the little mobs that spawns, okay? They look like little lohars frequently, but when you kill something, it's going to make a poison pool on the ground. It makes you take damage if you stand in the poison pool, and it heals the boss, Super bad to have a poison pool land on the boss. So a lot of what you need to know about poison the earth is very simply not killing ads. Ads are things that um, get added on to the fight over the course of the fight, the little monsters that, that add in. Don't kill the ads on top of the boss. That's most of what you need to know. Now, the hardest boss out of all of this is actually Frida now because people don't understand how to kill these ads separate from the boss, away from the boss. So I think we're going to start with the hardest fight first and walk through how to do all this. But before we do that, I have to show you the abilities because the abilities have actually changed. And the most important one that I want to actually talk about is the DPS class. If you play the DPS class correctly, you dramatically change your ability to win. So let's talk about that. The thing you need is three people in the DPS class to all choose Savage Attack. Over the next 10 seconds, all normal attacks increase the damage taken by the target by 1%. So this can stack up to 25 times. But this ability has a 25 second cooldown, which means that all of these stacks will fall off before you get this cooldown all over again. So if you have three people all take Savage Attack, you can maintain a 100% uptime on 25% more damage taken by the boss. You may think, is that really a big deal? This is a life-changing amount of boosted damage on the boss, and that's not all. There will be more. So you must try to get at least two people, and if you have two people that have this, the, what you do is you have one person use Savage Attack, It'll start to stack up, and then you'll see the cooldown timer start to wind down because the debuff is going to fall off the boss. Then what you need to do is have your next person use it, and it will refresh the timer for how long the stacks will last. So then it'll start to tick up and up and up again until you're up to 20, and then by the time that's wearing off, the original person who used Savage Attack can use this debuff all over again. This is very important to understand. I will try to show this to you with the pickup groups. The other thing that you really need to understand is that this skill has changed. Weakness was a debuff. 
And what it used to do is stack multiple times to reduce, I think it was the defense of the enemy, but now it does not stack. So you only need one person technically to have this ability, although it's maybe a little easier with two, which will apply a 20% health and defense reduction for 30 seconds. That's huge. You should try to maintain 100% uptime of this debuff on the boss over the course of the fight. Now, from here, this doesn't really matter too much, healing or damage. I think the healing is preferable, but realistically, you should have a healer that does the healing, and you should be focusing on these two abilities right over here. Now, if you are the tank, the important ability that you really need to select is Shatter Armor. Reduce the defense of the enemy by 20% for 30 seconds. And this stacks three times. Huge. The amount of damage you deal with all these debuffs applied is just dramatic. And the healer needs to have this configuration you see on the screen. Blood Drinker makes it so that you deal a ton of damage for a short window. You want these fights to end fast. And you actually want this to apply potentially when all the debuffs are stacked up on the boss. In a best case, that's how that will go. But it's a little more complicated that I'll leave, I'll leave it in that kind of there for now. And then the other ability is Dazzling Land. This is crucial. If you see your support taking these other abilities, man, it's kind of GG. Um, you need to have Dazzling Land to do that heal to keep you healthy so that you don't start taking 15% more damage per 20% health that you lose. That's how it snowballs out of control and you lose the fight. By the way, if you're getting value from this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing to the channel. It supports the channel tremendously and you'll start to get daily videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies directly to your YouTube feed. So let's go now and I'm going to try to, uh, let's just confirm those changes. Let's do a pickup group, okay? And I'm gonna do the hardest boss first and I expect we will lose. I'm telling you, you really want to do this with a full preform group that will dramatically increase your chances of winning in this fight. So let's match up and see what happens. Uh, and I'll be able to certainly uh, show you how the poison fields work and how to navigate them. So we're just going to match with full pug. Okay, full pug. Now, you could put a lot of thought into what commanders you're going to use. I would just generally suggest Having more march speed is good. If you've got commanders with more march speed, that's good. Cavalry is probably the way to go. If you're in Season of Conquest, XY Nevsky, Nevsky Joan. These are astonishingly good combos for every single boss. That's what I used, and we just completely wrecked this. Now, you can see here we have two tanks. This is almost guaranteed to be an auto-lose with two tanks. And you honestly could just leave the lobby if they don't change. I'm going to proceed because I still think it's really educational, more so to see the loss than the win. Um, so let's uh, queue up as the healer. This looks fine. I'm going to hit ready. Two healers. Great. I'm going to switch to DPS. What? Oh, I'm going to switch back to healer. I don't know what's happening here. We might, I mean, if, oh, oh are they really? Okay, we're doing it. This is, this is actually happening. To my astonishment, this is actually happening. Okay, here we go. Preset. Go. Okay. Boom. We go over here. Checking the volume. Volume actually looks good. Okay. We run over here. If the tank engages right away, man, that's like so disappointing. You really should wait until the rest of your team is in position before engaging the boss. And these other people haven't even left the starting zone. So this is how you know the quality of this pickup group is completely scuffed. I'm going to pop the huge damage buff here. It's possible that I should save this for when the ads are here, but I'm going to pop it now, try to crank the damage on the boss. I do like that we have the weakness debuff applied. The tank is correctly applying shatter armor. That's all really good. And I should be able to get one heal in before this boss actually phases and ices up. But with that said, um, it would be better if we had the stacking all damage taken debuff going as well. You can see our damage here is very good. Um, I mean, it's not amazing, but we'll get this boss below 50% in the first round. It's going to be the ads that absolutely wreck us. That's what's going to be really just a huge problem here. Very interesting that this tank is using a Tommy. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Tommy debuffs stack on the boss, so that's kind of cool. That's actually a great choice. Um, yeah, actually, actually a really cool tech play by this tank, assuming that works the way I think it does. Makes them take more skill damage. We're actually doing very, very well. 
The problem is not this phase, however, it's the next one. Big heel is in here. This is very important because if we drop below 80%, we'll all be taking 15% more damage, and this will snowball out of control. So there's the big heal effect. The boss is about to ice up, and now things get really dicey. Um, theoretically, what we should do here is really spread out. By spreading out, we make it so that we're not landing in each other's poison puddles. So uh, I would recommend going to different corners to kill these ads because what's going to happen... Yeah, I'm going to move, actually. Oh, boy. We need to kill all these ads. And what needs to happen is they need to not be killed on top of the boss. If they get killed on the boss, you'll see the poison puddle. You got to move away from the poison. So the whole team is getting poisoned. Yeah, this is almost certainly going to be a wipe off the back of what happens here. Okay. So ideally what you do is if you're this person, see, he did it. He did it very nicely. You move away from the poison puddle. You just take a step right outside of it and you just fight the next thing. These guys don't really seem to know how that works though. So the poison puddles are wrecking us and you see exactly how that poison puddle mechanic works. So now I kill that thing. I want to move out of that poison puddle. And if I ideally had multiple things aggroed to me, what I would do is, um, oh boy. Yeah, I just take a, a step out of the poison puddle and fight the next one. So now, if they drag these little guys onto the boss, which they are doing, we're all but guaranteed to lose. Because when these little guys die, they're going to heal the boss, and it's basically game over. So let's see how this pans out. Um, Yeah, uh, this is a disaster. The only thing that can save us is if this tank taunts the boss to move it away from the adds. Um, I'm going to try to pop the damage ability. Oh, watch the boss's health. Look, it's going up. Boss's health is going up. We really need the damage ability to get this win. Here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Boss is now up to 32%. So the boss's health is going up. Way up. We might still get the W here with a pickup group, which I find impressive. These ads may not die off the counterattacks alone, and we might be okay. Maybe. But now we're below 80%. In fact, some of these guys are below 50%. So they're taking like 30% more damage. This is really bad. Um, and you can see we might get there. Oh, big healing going down. The boss isn't in it, though. My friends, we've done it. Maybe with a pickup group. Can we do it? It can be done with a pickup group and two tanks. Unbelievable. I can't fathom it. But we got there. Incredible. Okay, so you see it can be done. I think the healing abilities were really great. I think that made a big difference, and you can see these rewards are very good. That's Frida. We did not even execute cleanly, and we got the win. Huge. Now, Torgny is another tricky one. The thing that's now tricky about Torgny is that you're going to have to kill the ads not on top of Torgny. He spawns ads that you know you've got to kill and get under the shield bubble in order to um, not die from this guy's AoE. But if you kill those ads on top of Torgny, he will heal. It's not the end of the world, though. It's actually achievable to still win. Now, looking at this tank's abilities, I feel like he doesn't know what he's doing because he's missing the poison ability. Not the poison, the um, defense reduction. Maybe he will switch to it. We now have two tanks. If we enter this fight with two tanks then both of these players, I'm not trying to be rude to them, are kind of asleep at the wheel because you really only need one. I'm going to switch to DPS because somebody else joined as a healer. They have the wrong healing abilities. I am concerned. Although, ah, this is actually not the worst. They have Dazzling Land. I, that This could be okay. You don't technically need the damage ability. But if these guys think we're going to win with three tanks, let me tell you, they have another thing coming. I honestly still don't understand why someone would enter this match, see that we have three tanks, and think this is fine. I genuinely don't understand the, that choice. Here we are. Um, this is not like, I'm not trying to be rude to those individuals, genuinely. I'm just saying, I don't know why you would, like, like I, I, I guess most people have not raided uh, in, in a game like World of Warcraft to understand that you want a balance of classes, right? You want a balance of classes because each ba uh, class offers you unique strengths. Now, this is another one of those situations where the tank, if they hit the boss before everybody's in position, you know they're kind of new to the game or, or kind of asleep at the wheel, but whatever. Let's apply our debuff to the boss. This will make it so we do more damage. 
Realistically, doing more damage to the boss in this instance doesn't matter too much. What you really need to do is have control over each of the phases when you get to 75%, 50%, 25%, um, and then big burst from 25% to zero. And I just don't know if we're going to have the big burst for that 25% to zero. I've got to get out of this so I'm not taking extra damage that I don't need to. You can tell that people are more inexperienced because they stayed in that damage. And I am very pleasantly surprised to see the tank running away from the boss. I'm very happy to see that. Nicely done. Now we kill the ad. I don't know where the tank is running, but they can stop. We get under the bubble. The poison field drops. We all get poisoned. Kind of sucks. They're going to die, though, from the AoE of the boss. So we're going to lose this fight, potentially. Okay. They weren't under the bubble. And the healer has not healed. So that's a good sign. Um, I'm actually going to use my own healing ability to keep healthy. I'm going to debuff the boss. But again, remember, this is not about, uh, this is not a DPS race. And the reason this is not a DPS race yet, DPS is damage per second, is that these phases are controlled. At 75%, you saw the sequence that happens. He's going to do it again at 50%. Very happy to see the healer engaged here with a, with a big team heal. Love to see this. This is what we need. I'll point out that the team is standing in the AoE and taking huge amounts of unnecessary damage. The only person who needs to be standing in that AoE is the tank. And now I actually, because they're all in the wrong position, I need to move closer to them so that they get my Joan buffs. So it's funny, their wrong move uh, makes it so that my correct position is now wrong. I'm going to back off. The boss is still at over 50%, so we have to continue this fight. It hasn't phased yet. Um, let's go over here. I'm going to pop a heal on myself. It doesn't matter exactly that I let this debuff fall off. I probably shouldn't have because this part is not a race as I, as I keep mentioning. Once we get to the race, oh, it's on me. I need to move this way and, and kind of near my friends. Hopefully this is not on the boss, but close enough to my friends. Um, these guys are, need to get in the puddle. We also need to kill this thing. There it is. We get in the puddle. This is going okay. I don't. I just don't know if we have enough damage to get through the next phase. All right. Whoa! Don't don't go! Don't go! Don't go! Don't, 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 don't go yet. Okay. Now, uh, we go around here. I know my AP is capping. I probably could do this better. In fact, I'm going to apply this debuff at range. And now is when we enter the DPS race. Almost. So the next 25% is all about setup. It's set up for when this guy gets to 25% because when he gets to 25%, he's going to start applying a big debuff that's going to really wreck us. And you can clear that debuff if you kill the ad, but now killing the ad is going to heal the boss, which is kind of an issue. So I want this guy to be debuffed and I want us to do lots of damage, but I only really want that to start once we get below 25% on the boss health. Technically, I can heal myself here, and I think I'm going to have enough AP, uh, enough of these little action points, to do everything I do in the next need to do in the next stage. We'll see if that works out the way I think it will. We're about to hit that 25% mark, and then the race will begin. At that point, if we don't kill the boss quickly, we're going to get completely wrecked. Okay, here it is. 25% hits. Apply the debuff. Apply this other debuff. And now it's all in. I got a high chest goal. Yeah, I wonder if they know that like you're live on YouTube. Well, not live. You're going to be in a YouTube video, baby. Let's go. So I don't know how we're doing this with three tanks. And by the way, if we had three tanks and they were applying the defense debuff, it would kind of be a different story, but they're not. And I like, honestly, I'm impressed that we might just win anyways here. This is astonishing to me. Uh, we lost one person. Here comes the ad. I'm not going to kill the ad. Oh, God. Uh, I'm going to move away with the ad. I'm going to kill the ad away from the boss. No, he pulled it back to the boss. The boss is going to heal. Don't heal the boss. Don't heal the boss. Okay, well, this is going to get interesting. If I step in this, it's going to clear the stacks. The boss is now healing. We are taking so much more damage, but the boss is so low. They're healing the boss again. No, we got three tanks and they're still healing the boss. I'm going to clear the stacks on me. I'm going to move away. Oh, no. Can the three of us get this done? I honestly don't know. 
I think we've stolen defeat from the jaws of victory in this instance. I'm going to apply the 30-second debuff on the boss. The boss is going to heal again, and that's GG. So defeat from the jaws of victory. If we had three tanks, all we need is for any one of those tanks to taunt the adds away from the boss, kill the ad separate from the boss, and it would have been a huge win. But here we are, uh, getting that L. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is why I'm doing a pickup group, because I think it's more educational to see the things that are going wrong than to just show you, like, huge DPS, clean win. Because you can see this is winnable. Very winnable, even with pugs. But I'm going to back out of this one. It was a nice attempt, but I think you've... I've probably shared with you all the things there is to, to learn or that I could teach you from that fight. Now, Dakar is a boss that people think is really, really hard. This fight actually got easier. And the reason this fight is relatively easier is that there aren't actually many ads. The only ads in this fight are the little totems that pop up. And the developers changed this fight. This is what's called a polarity fight. It's called that from Thaddeus back in the day. That's the first boss I ever encountered in World of Warcraft and in any game that basically has players have one symbol or another. And if you're matched up with people from the opposite symbol, you, uh, you start taking lots of damage. So in this fight, I think it's lightning and fire. If fire stands next to a lightning person, everybody blows up. It's a disaster. So in a polarity fight, what you want to do is have people on separate sides from each other. And the game now, by default, makes it, I think, so that people are next to each other with the same polarity when those polarities first get issued. So you'll notice that the people grouped up together are going to get the same polarity, I think. Tank doesn't know what they're doing. No offense to them because they engage the fight before everybody's even here. Whatever. This is a pickup group. Um, now, you're going to notice. Watch, watch what polarities people get. I'm going to... Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. I'm completely wrong. This fight was not made easier. That fire person needs to go to the right. I go to the left. And I guess I just got really, really lucky the past three or four times I've done this boss and the polarities all lined up next to each other. Whatever. Now I'm going to start. Hmm. Still haven't used any abilities, which is awkward. These guys need to go up and the lightning people need to go down. This guy is just going to stand there. So that's a little awkward. I'm going to pop the damage buff because I think we might lose the fight here. If we don't actually kill these adds fast enough, we're just going to lose. And I'm a healer. I can't actually kill this ad fast. So I think this might already be over. Get out of the damage. Got to get out of that other damage. Oh, God. It's actually a lot trickier to explain and play the fight at the same time. You'll just have to take my word for that. All right. Well, uh... I don't know where this lightning guy's going, but he needs to not charge up. There we go. Fire guys are going to come down over here. Okay. You'd think that this fight is now somewhat stable, but we're about to have a polarity shift. Now, because he said chastisement of lightning and fire, I know that one of us is going to switch polarities. So I proactively moved away from him so that we don't blow each other up. This guy is going completely the wrong way. They figured it out and they turned around. These guys have been forced away from the boss because that guy was in the wrong direction. So now we lose a lot of damage. But look, I am being overly critical. I don't want to come across as overly critical. I'm being overly detailed in my explanation of what's happening because I think it's educational. Um, Now, this is really awkward. This is going to go all over the place. Uh, I am going to go here and I should now be safe. And because this group is so hectic, my goal is not to try to do damage. It's just to be safe. Normally, I would be focused on doing damage. We go back in. This group urgently needs a heal. Uh, we've lost one person, two people. They're dead. Can we win this fight with three people? Maybe. Chastisement of lightning and fire. We need to spread out. We have spread out. That's smart. Fire guy should stand on me. And we have seven minutes and 32 seconds to win this fight. All my videos have timestamps. If you don't want to see the next seven minutes and 32 seconds... You can use the timestamp, and that's a fine way to navigate through this video. Um, I'm standing on top of this fire guy because we actually get a damage boost, last I checked, when we stand on top of someone with similar polarities. And the way to do these... Oh, that guy did the checker squares wrong. He figured it out. Like, the way to do this is to be very predictable. You want to go from the square you're in to a neighboring square, and then back to the same square you just left. 
You want to be extremely predictable so your other people in your party know what you're doing. So you can see I'm being very predictable. And, and once he's seen me be predictable, he's like, okay, I can see where this guy's going. I'm going to do another fat heal because, I mean, we need to stay healthy if we're going to get this win. And I actually think it's possible with the remaining people we have that this fight is winnable. Um, polarity swap happened. I go up and the fire guy should go down. Fire guy might not have noticed, so I can just go back right since my other fire guy shifted for me, so that's fine. And this is why I went the healer class, by the way, and why I think a healer class makes legendary difficulty so much more achievable is that with a healer, you can have a lot of sustain, but we have a problem. We have two tanks, no damage, and I don't think we can kill these totems in time. Because the fire polarity guy went to the lower totem, I'm forced to the higher totem and because I'm lightning polarity, but I don't think I can kill this in time, so we're all just going to die. Um, and I don't know how much damage this is about to do, but it's probably a lot. I actually am going to escape the damage. My allies did not, but we're okay. Actually, that was way less damage than I thought. And look, over the course of this video, I'm like not trying to be overly critical. I actually do feel overly critical. I'm like really not trying to harsh on folks, but I am trying to like show the things I would do differently. All right, I'm gonna heal. Hopefully we have enough time between now and the next ability to stay healthy. With five minutes remaining, I really do think that even with two tanks and a healer, we can get the W here. Uh, this is very awkward though. We need to run. Um, and what I like to do, watch how I move here. This poison's gonna go here. And then I walk where the poison was. And by going to where the poison was, now I don't have to run the whole damn pinwheel to avoid the damage. All I did was just go to where the poison was. Now I need to switch sides. Uh-oh. I don't want to be too close to this guy because I'm, I'm probably going to be lightning. There it is. So I'm going to shift left. Those guys shift right. And we're freaking stable, baby. We are stable. Okay. Why is this guy coming to me? I will move a little bit. Um, the problem with moving too much, by the way, is you lose damage. I think people don't appreciate that the biggest loss of damage is actually walking in this game. It sounds really simple. Like, oh, what's the big deal with walking? But when you're walking, you're not doing damage. And the thing that you want to be tracking is how much damage per second you're doing. Your damage per second when you're walking is zero. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, I'm just going to keep going between these squares. These guys have given me no way to, to, well, now maybe I have a window to, like, engage <clears throat> on the boss, but okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um, this is going, actually, I would say above average for a pickup group. I'm going to heal everybody up. I just got to keep us healthy. Uh, we got a chastisement of lightning and fire again. I am probably, well, I'm definitely becoming fire. I am going to stand on the fire guy because I think we get, like, a 2% damage boost. Let's go, Poppy Chiskel. Let's freaking go. Dude, poggers, definitely worth not watching what was happening to put that on the screen. Uh-oh, uh, we're aft. I don't know how I'm going to get all the way to this thing. I think I should probably just fight the boss and not bother killing this little thing. I don't know what happens if it does more damage if the totems are not killed at all. I think it does more damage. Oh my god. Dude, this is outrageous. This is outrageous. I mean, I think we get the dub here. I, I don't think I can escape this. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, I might be out of it. Uh, nope, 38,000 damage. That is what it is. Is what it is. And uh, I'm going to get this heal going. I know I'm not quite there yet, but I'm looking pretty healthy, and I'm just worried we're going to run. We're going to run out of time. Pretty soon, what I'm going to need to do is damage buffs, actually. So my next cycle is going to be a damage buff, because with 2 minutes and 25 seconds left, we're going to get timed out on this fight. It's going to enrage. Um, enrage refers to the boss just doing insane amounts of damage. I think I need to give these guys space uh i think they're okay actually oh i need to move uh oh uh oh um but they've positioned the boss in a way that i can technically do some damage here at the same time 
This is what you want, actually, is a, a square cycle like we're doing where I can do damage. Um, so I'm going to actually chase this. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he was unpredictable there. He, he went to a place that was different than he went to last time. That's why you want to be really predictable. Go the same squares every time. Um, okay. I think we're going to get this guy. Chastisement. I'm ready to move. These guys should spread out a little bit because they're going to light each other up. Yep, they're lighting each other up, like I said. Uh, I'm going to go over here. We are in a 1 minute 30 second da damage race. DPS boost activated. Big DPS boost activated. I don't think the 2% damage boost I get by stacking on this guy is worth moving. I'm going to lose damage when I walk. Just fight the boss, everybody. Don't don't kill the ads. Just fight the boss. Okay, tanks killing the ad. Just kill the boss. End the fight. End the fight. Dude, we're going to get a lot of wins with pugs today. Actually impressive. Let's go. Got it done. Pickup group. Achievable. I honestly am very impressed that we're still getting wins with pickup groups. And look at that. Everybody's getting rewards. Chad, I'm just here to help, okay? I'm just here to help. Okay, from here. We've done Frida, Dakar, Torgny. This was an L. Uh, but we beat Frida and Dakar. Um, now I want to do Astrid. Astrid is basically unchanged. This should be pretty easy. Um, the key to Astrid is actually having two tanks. And you know what's funny? I bet you in this fight, we're not going to get two tanks. Like every other fight, we've had more tanks than we needed. Really? And now we'll see if we can even get two. Here, and, and you can do it even with one or zero, honestly. And this fight was not really made much harder. So now people are loading in. Um, the reason you want two tanks is that this boss applies a debuff. That debuff makes it so that when she enters the next phase, she's going to do area of effect damage that'll instantly kill you if you still have the debuff. In the second phase, she doesn't apply any debuffs anymore, which is why you need the second tank to taunt. So that the first tank who ate all the debuffs, who would get destroyed instantly, doesn't get destroyed instantly. <laughs> the person who was damaged left. What a disaster. Okay. And look at this. They all have the same abilities. Like, pick some different abilities, please. Please just bring some diversity to the group. Please. I beg of you. There we go. Three tanks again. Well, you know, it's only so much you can do. Um, what I often do, but never really works, is I'll swap between the tank button and the DPS button to try to show people. I just do it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to see if they're paying any attention to what I'm doing to be like, hmm, I, since he can't chat to me, is he suggesting that I should switch to DPS? That's like all I can do to try to communicate that a three tank lineup is not like, is it just not a good plan? But whatever. Oh, another tank left. I don't know what, like, do people just queue up and they're like, I have my heart set on being a tank and to be anything other than what I am would be a crime against my humanity. Like, I don't know what people think there. But now we have two tanks, two deeps, and a healer. That's actually the ideal configuration. Oh my God, we're getting there, chat. We're getting there. It took five minutes of queue, but we got there. Now, you may be thinking, just go, why did you not just edit this all down? I think it's helpful to see the struggle. The struggle is real. To see how it all goes if you pick up group. And this is perhaps the, the most glowing endorsement to just run a group with your team. Now, once again, we have the tank who's probably engaging this. Oh, they pulled away. I'm so happy that they did not engage the fight before we were ready. Look at this. Everybody's spread out. We're in position. Hot damn. This group is lit. Okay, here we go. Ooh, we got the healer using the big. Oh, look, I get to show you the savage attack stacking. Look, the stacks are going down. I'm going to use my savage attack. Now they're going up again. Easy. Who's got the arrow? Oh, God, the tank is the arrow. We're all going to die. Okay. Okay. Well, we all have the debuff. What just happened? If you're new to this fight, the only thing that everybody else in the party needs to do is run away from the boss if they get the arrow put on the head. That, their head, that includes the tank, by the way. Even the tank is supposed to run away. And I was so excited with what was happening. I might have let the savage stacks fall off. It looks like they have 25 stacks on them. I can't, I can't tell what's going on. I used my debuff just in case. I'm being a bad DPS, honestly. I'm not paying enough attention. 
Let's see how this goes. Uh, uh oh, oh, oh. We're all debuffed, but as long as we don't get hit by the frontal AOE, we're gonna be okay. Just gonna make sure that I don't get hit by it. I'm gonna apply this. Tw oh, dude, look. Oh, it fell off. Come on. I had one second left. Whatever. I'm a bad DPS, apparently, today. Bad Chiskul is bad. Also, this pathing is kind of sus. Whatever. All right. Well, I think we're going to get the win with a pickup group, which I, I'm impressed. Now, I have to decide here. I don't have enough energy. I do have enough energy to do both. Um, by the way, you notice that the, the other DPS tried to stack the uh, debuff. Oops, I just clicked it. That was dumb. To click this, I was trying to show it to you. The Savage Attack debuff. Um, but if you're not next to the boss, it doesn't apply. Like, every second you're normal attacking it, it applies. So, you don't want to use that ability if, if you're not, like, right next to him. So, I just was, like, the perfect example of what not to do. All right. Um, do I wait to stack more? I'm going to use this instead. Rather than try to stack the debuff, and now I'm going to do this correctly because it's on me. I'm going to run away from the... Well, it's not me. It's this other guy. Well, technically, he should have ran. Technically, I could have run to stay away from it. And double technically, because this boss is about to die, you, you can just, like, try to DPS it down before the fight ends, and then you'll win anyways. So, because this is almost over, I'm going to pop this. Try to get some damage stacks going here. Maybe the other guy will pop theirs. And um, yeah, we're going to get the win. Not great execution on my part, but uh, Pug win. There it is. Pug dub. Easy. So from here, we've got one final ball. Oh, it just phased on us. Okay. Don't get ahead of yourself, just cool. There's the win. That lady wasn't singing. Final boss we're going to do. All right. Look at that. I'm just helping other people get the rewards here. I, I'm so, <laughs> so noble. Okay. Uh, Akenhawk. This fight, I've tried to just do the exact same way that we've been running it. And that is just going up into the corner. You avoid the big donuts of damage on the ground. And if your group has enough damage, you can win. But even in an SW, that's my alliance, preform group, this was close to an L when I did it. So I don't think it's nearly as easy as it used to be because the bosses are healthier, harder hitting. And I think that the ads that spawn on this boss can wreck you. They recommend two tanks. I don't know what this group is going to do, but because we have a healer, I need to be a DPS. I have the right abilities. Maybe this time I'll pay more attention and actually use them properly. And let's try to run off to the side. So, um, what I like to do is have everybody stack up over here. What these guys might try to do is split tank. I feel like this fight would be cool if split tanking was the correct way to run it. But I don't think it is. It's just easier to have everybody go over here. And, and you can see, I think that's what people are up to. Our healer just entered the fight. Let's go. Um, and I'm just going to try to debuff these guys and see if we get the win. I think I might try to debuff them both. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this fight that um, I don't know if everybody understands, which is that their health is linked. So it doesn't matter which one you do damage to. Their health is linked. Their health will go down um, equally. Like, like it's just one health bar, uh, technically. So you want to put debuffs onto one of these guys and have everybody hit the same one that's fully debuffed. And then you sort of get the full benefit uh, as if they both were fully debuffed. Does that make sense? So since Ak is always the first one here because he started on the left, theoretically, the thing we should do is try to fully debuff Ak. And because I actually don't... Oh, there's the ad. Um, I think this ad dies and kill, makes a poison cloud. It did. So now the bosses are healing, technically, which is very awkward. And I don't know if I can target Ak anymore. Oh, thank goodness. They kind of moved. Now I can target Ak again. Let's go. I'm just going to try to keep the debuffs on Ak, focus all the damage on him, hope for the best. Technically, because I'm doing area of effect damage, hitting both of these guys means I am doing more total damage, obviously, even though their health bar is shared. 
So, so far, looking pretty good. Seems fine. I'm going to try to front load as much damage as we can here by applying my debuffs now. I'm going to run out of energy, but I think that's okay. Right now, we are healthier, so applying all my energy now to make him take more damage um, is, I think, beneficial because soon we will be lower health and do less damage. Also, what the heck just happened? The boss forced us to move? I don't quite understand that, but I'm just going to keep doing damage and hope for the best. I feel like I haven't seen our healer cast a big heal, or if he did, I just wasn't paying any attention. But we are in trouble. Our health is too low to get the dub here. At least I think it is. I don't know. I'm going to apply this debuff again. I really only have the energy now to just use this one right over here, weakness. So I'm just going to maintain that, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I'm almost dead. I, I am looking pretty dead here. So I actually need to get off as many debuffs as I can before I die. I'm going to use this one. Once I'm dead, I can't apply any more debuffs, so I got to just get as much in as I can. I'm going to apply that one. If we get the win, I'm going to be super impressed here. Uh, is it healing again? No. We might get the win. Stack in the corner, hope for the best. I'm dead. Like I said, I tried to get all my debuffs in, all my energy spent. I did the max I could for the team there. I'm not quite sure why I took more damage. Maybe I had aggro on the second guy. Um, but pickup group. Pickup group. We got the win. Hey, let's go. Great work, team. On really every team. I mean, people are still learning all these new bosses. Again, I apologize. If I came across as critical, I just want to talk through like all the things I'm seeing and all the things, even the small things that we can do to level up our game so that we as a Rise of Kingdoms community are better and better at just getting these wins in this game mode, okay? That's how you beat all these bosses. Definitely achievable. And if you needed a boost, you could go to the shop and you could spend your currency on these things, but I generally don't think you need to. I like to get all these different rewards. I pick the material crates. I take the gold, the teleport, and the speed ups. And it looks like I even took the gold keys because I had so much currency. And there you go. If you found this video helpful, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here and consider subscribing to the channel. My genuine goal with the over 1,850 videos I've made dedicated to Rise of Kingdoms is to make you a better player. So hopefully this has convinced you that I can do that for you and make you a better player in Rise of Kingdoms. Alternatively, if you just want some popcorn, I've got a couple videos you might find pretty entertaining. In the end screen, there'll be cards for my city getting rallied, and I lost 14 million power, and also a card for Justin, also known as Yoda, at 1.5 billion power getting rallied as well. I mean, who doesn't want to watch that?